everyone. Welcome to Entertainment Tonight in Hollywood. Sitting in for John Tesh, I'm Rob Weller. And Mary? And, hi there, Rob. Once again, here in New York City, I'm Mary Hart. How are things back in Hollywood? Terrific. How was everything in New York? Well, I got to tell you, it is one of those days that everybody should experience in New York City. It's absolutely gorgeous. All righty. Well, start things off for us, Mary. Okay. You know, we usually begin the show with a story about a superstar with a household name. Today's inside story is just the opposite. It's about Roy Buchanan, a man you likely have never heard of. Roy Buchanan was a guitar player. Musicians he influenced went on to much acclaim. Acclaim for Roy Buchanan came from other guitar players. Last month, he took his own life in a jail cell. Roy Buchanan had played life and the electric guitar right to the limit and then fell over the edge. <laughs> Roy Buchanan could make his guitar sound almost like a church organ. For the son of a Pentecostal preacher, it was only natural. Music for Roy was a religious experience. I can, I can listen to it back and get goosebumps and, you know, feel like there's a, a spiritual presence there. You know, then I know I've done the right thing. <laughs> quiet man, the blue-collar antithesis of the flashy rock star. But inside Roy, there was a lot of pain, and his music reflected that. I think the lonely thing is kind of born inside of a person. That's, uh, that's uh, what makes him play. My dad used to call it the blues. I, I think he was right. I think if Roy Buchanan hadn't been able to play the guitar, he would have exploded. It had to come from somebody who just had a fire burning inside him all the time that couldn't be put out and couldn't be let out. For 48 years, Roy Buchanan struggled to keep that fire under control. And when the music's over... He had fought drugs in the 70s, and more recently, alcohol abuse. Friends said his drinking had appeared to be under control. Professionally, Buchanan was a man with everything to live for. He played about 100 shows a year, toured internationally, and felt artistically at home with his new record label, Alligator, which made his death by suicide in this jail cell last month all the more shocking. Police responded to a call about a family fight at Buchanan's home in Reston, Virginia, about 10 p.m. Sunday night. His wife told police that Buchanan had been drinking and, quote, she couldn't handle him. Police picked him up a few blocks from his home shortly thereafter and brought him to the nearby Fairfax County Adult Detention Center. Buchanan was routinely placed alone in a receiving cell to sober up. He was checked about 10 minutes later. On the second check at 11.16 p.m., they found Buchanan hanged with his shirt from the window grate. Efforts to revive him failed. Buchanan's death was the first suicide in the jail since 1980. Those closest to Roy were shocked, but not surprised. Buchanan had tried to hang himself after another arrest back in 1980. I thought this would be the way that he would die, but I didn't think it would happen now. Left behind were his wife Judy, seven children, and five grandchildren. Born in Arkansas, raised in California, Roy at 15 ran away from home. So determined was he to be a blues guitarist. He backed Dale Hawkins of Susie Q fame and taught Robbie Robertson to play guitar in 1960 when they were with a Canadian group later known as the band. I think he was as good when he was born as he is now. In 1971 came a documentary that propelled him to international renown. It was in this production that Roy was dubbed the best unknown guitarist in the world. He made his first of 12 albums the following year, but Roy always seemed determined to turn away the spotlight. When the Rolling Stones called looking to replace the late Brian Jones on lead guitar, Roy turned them away. I didn't want to be casually number two. He was driven to making his music, to being the greatest guitar player that he or anybody else knew. He succeeded at that. He did not succeed in selling it. I think probably the reason I never made it big was because I didn't care whether I made it big or not. I, like I said, I, I really didn't give a damn. All I wanted to do was learn to play the guitar for myself, and I, I didn't care about anybody else. Though Roy was ill-equipped to play the rock star, his commitment to his music was lifelong and intense, and when connected to his Fender Telecaster, he stretched the limits of the electric guitar. Musically speaking, I think Roy was going through a very happy period. There were other devils that, that haunted Roy, I think, throughout his entire life. And I think they finally caught up with him. If Roy felt guilty about his excesses, perhaps then in the end it didn't matter that his career was on track, or that he was planning a new album in the fall and marketing his own Roy Buchanan guitar. 
even that he was a rediscovered rock hero who had influenced a generation of musicians and had left a legacy of the blues. the guitar was the only thing that Roy Buchanan ever wanted to do. In 1955, when he ran away from home, he joined the Johnny Otis Rhythm and Blues Review. Sad ending to a genius of a performer. Rob? All right, Mary. Well